friends. <clears throat> Today, we are going to begin with what is a partnership account and a few aspects of it. So suppose Ram had started a business of trading in garments. He had started with a capital of rupees 1 lakh. But now, as the business grows, the capital requirements will also grow. Plus, Ram might need help from other people in managing his business. So, two of his friends, say Sham and Rahim, has joined with him in his business and each has brought in a capital of, say, Sham had brought in a capital of 2 lakh rupees, whereas Rahim brought in a capital of another 1 lakh rupees. So, all these three friends, Ram, Sham and Rahim, have formed a partnership. These three are the partners and each of them has brought in a capital contribution towards the firm. Let us see what is the definition of a partnership. Partnership is governed by the Indian Partnership Act nineteen thirty two section four defines partnership as follows it is a relation between persons who have agreed to share The profit of a business carried on by all or any one of them acting for all. So let us break this definition into its various components and we will see what are the features of a partnership account. The first part of the definition says that it is a relationship between persons that is two or more persons come together to form a partnership. In this case Ram, Sham and Rahim had come together to form a partnership. Now the minimum number of persons in a partnership has to be two because if there is only one member, it will not be a partnership, but it will be a sole proprietorship. The company's rules 2014 has defined the maximum members to be 50. That is a partnership firm can have two to 15 members at any point of time. So, if we look at the features of a partnership firm, the first feature is two or more persons. Next, who have agreed to share the profit of a business? So, we have sharing the profit as our second feature that is when a partnership is formed all the partners of the firm decide in what ratio the profits will be shared amongst themselves say Ram, Sham and Rahim has decided that the profits will be shared equally among themselves. So, suppose the firm makes a profit of 9,000 rupees in 2019-20, then 
the total profit will be divided among the three partners in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 that is 3000 for each partner. Similarly, if there is a loss, then the loss will also be shared proportionately between all the three partners. So the profits of 9000 rupees will be divided amongst the three partners in equal proportion of 3000 rupees each. Next we have sharing the profits of a business. Suppose these three friends Ram, Sham and Rahim had brought a plot of land jointly without indulging in any business. Then they will not be said to be partners. They will simply be the joint owners of this plot of land. However, if they are in the business of purchase and sale of land for a profit, then they will be known as partners. In this example, Ram, Sham and Rahim had formed a partnership firm for the purpose of trading in garments, that is the purchase and sale of garments to have a profit. So business is a very important requirement for any partnership firm. Next we have carried on by all or any of them acting for all. Now what does this mean? In this firm there are three partners Ram, Sham and Rahim. It may be that Rahim was only added as a partner so as to get the capital contribution that is the money was needed to run the business and Rahim was prepared to provide that money. But the major decisions of the day to day functioning of the firm is taken by Ram and Sham. So it can be that all the three partners are actively involved in the decisions of the firm or it may be that only one or two of those partners are taking the regular decisions. So carried on by all means each of these three partners has a right to participate in the conduct of the business but upon mutual understanding, they might decide that only one or two of the partners will take all the decisions or any of them acting for all. That is, the acts of all these partners are binding upon the other partners. Say Ram enters into a contract with a supplier for purchase of 1000 cloth pieces. Now Ram has entered into this contract on behalf of the partnership firm. This means that Sham and Rahim will also be bound by this contract. These two cannot deny that they have not entered into the contract and therefore the contract does not bind them. So the decision taken by any one of the partner will bind all the partners in the firm. And the fifth feature is an agreement. The first point was relation. This relation is defined on the basis of an agreement. That is all the terms of the agreement say profit sharing ratio or how much capital each partner will bring etc are defined by way of this agreement. The agreement can be oral or written. The act does not require a written agreement to be mentioned to be there in all cases. Even if the agreement is oral, it is as much binding on all the partners as 
a written agreement will be. So, so far we have seen what is a partnership firm. It is when two or more persons come together to conduct a business. The features of a partnership firm are two or more persons. Number two, profit sharing. That is a loss is also shared amongst the partners in the ratio that has been agreed. Number three is a business. Partnership exists to conduct a business. If there is no business, then there is no partnership. Number four, mutual agency. That is, the business is carried on by all or any of them acting for all. And last is an agreement. The agreement can be oral or written. Both are completely valid in the eyes of law. Now let us look at what is a partnership deed. Suppose Ram, Shyam and Rahim decide to enter into a written agreement. Then the document containing all the terms of the partnership is known as a partnership deed. So when the agreement is in writing, The document which contains the terms of the agreement is called a partnership deed. The partnership deed contains a lot of details such as the name and address of the firm, name and address of the partners, the nature of business, amount of capital contribution, profit sharing ratio, interest on capital, etc. Now let us look at some important provisions. Of the partnership act suppose that there is no written agreement between the partners or the agreement is silent with respect to the profit sharing ratio then the profit sharing ratio will be taken to be equal that is if the profit is 9000 rupees and there are three partners suppose in the deed it is mentioned that the profit will be divided amongst the partners in the ratio of say 5 is to 2 is to 2 then the profit will be divided as 5000 2000 and 2000 to partner 1, partner 2 and partner 3 respectively. But if the deed is silent, that is no specific ratio is defined in the partnership deed, then the ratio will be taken as 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is each of the three partners will get an equal profit of 3000 rupees each. Next is the interest on capital. So what is interest on capital? As we have seen that each partner contributes some amount from his pockets known as capital contribution. Say the three partners Ram, Sham and Rahim have contributed 1 lakh Ram 2 lakhs sham and 
one lakh rahim. Now this is the capital, that is the amount which each of the three partners have brought into the business. If the part now so now this is like all the three partners have given some money for the conduct of business. So the partnership firm is rewarding them for their capital contribution. It's like if you had saved, deposited these amounts in the bank account, you would have been paid a nominal interest on your savings account. Similarly, the firm may also decide to give an interest on these capitals. If the deed mentions that a capital of say 2% will be given as interest on the capital, then the three partners will be entitled to 2000 rupees to Ram as interest, 4000 to Sham and 1000, sorry, 2000 to Rahim. But if the deed is silent as to the percentage of cap interest on capital, then no interest will be provided to the partners. Now third is the interest on drawings. What is drawings? Drawings means any amount that is withdrawn by the partners from the business for their personal use. So it is kind of that say Ram had given 1 lakh rupees from his pocket for the conduct of business but now he is withdrawing that is taking out say 20,000 rupees from the business for its personal use. So if the deed specifies that a 2% interest will be charged on all the drawings that is the firm is allowing Ram to take out the money so it's kind of penalizing him for that withdrawal. So if the deed specifies that 2% has to be charged to Ram then an interest on drawings of 400 rupees will be charged. If the deed is silent then no interest on drawings will be charged. Next is the interest on advances. Now Ram, Sham and Rahim had given a capital contribution of 1 lakh, 2 lakh and 1 lakh. But the firm is in need of money. So Ram decides to extend a loan to the company, sorry, to the firm, say of 50,000 rupees. This loan is in addition to the capital and it is in the form of loan. That is, the firm will have to repay this to Ram. This is like if we take a loan from the bank. Instead of bank, the firm is taking a loan from the partner itself. So, if the deed is silent, then an interest on this loan will have to be paid at the rate of 6% per annum. But if the deed specifies any rate, say 10%, then an interest at the rate of 10% will have to be paid to Ram for this loan extended. Now next and the last provision is with respect to remuneration that is salary. Now all these three partners will be conducting the business of the partnership firm. So if the partnership firm, ex sorry, if the partnership deed expressly provides to provide a salary to these three partners, then that defined amount will be provided. Say the deed specifies that a salary of rupees 10,000 will be provided to each partner per month, then this amount of 1,20,000 rupees will be provided. But if the deed is silent, then 
no salary will be given. So just a quick revision. If the deed is silent, the profit sharing ratio will be equal interest on capital will not be provided interest on drawings will not be charged interest on loan will be given at the rate of 6% per annum and remuneration or salary will not be given to the partners So now we are going to look at the maintenance of the capital account. Each partner is going to contribute some amount as its capital. There are two methods of maintaining the capital account. One is the fixed capital account method. And second is the fluctuating. Now let us look at these two methods in detail. Now what does fixed capital account means? So in a capital account, the following types of transaction can take place. Introduction of capital. Withdrawal of capital. Profit or loss of the partner interest on capital if any interest on drawings salary etc so capital is basically all the transactions other than loan that has been done with the partners and all the entitlements of the partner so what does fixed capital account consider Fixed capital account says that suppose Ram has brought in a capital of 1 lakh rupees. Of 1 lakh rupees. Now, uh, he was entitled to a profit for the year of say 10,000. An interest on capital of say 1,000 rupees and a salary of 12,000 for the year 2019 to 2020. Now the fixed capital account method says that the capital contribution of RAM is fixed. That is one lakh rupees. All the other transactions, that is a profit, interest on capital and salary are the day-to-day -day transaction with the partner. That is, these elements should not alter the total capital contribution that Ram has provided. Until and unless Ram decides to withdraw any portion of this 1 lakh rupees, this should remain fixed. All the other transactions with Ram should be recorded in a separate account, that is, the current account. So, in fixed capital account method, two separate accounts are maintained. That is capital account and current account. So, in this, trans uh, in this example, at the end of 31st March 2020, The capital account will reflect a balance of 1 lakh rupees credit and current account will reflect a balance of 23,000 credit. That is 10,000, 1,000 and 12,000. In fluctuating capital account, for each partner, only one account is maintained. 
each partner only has one account that is the capital account therefore all these transactions of ram will be recorded in a single account and so the capital account will reflect a balance of 123000 in case of a fluctuating capital account method now the second difference is also based on this in fixed capital account method all adjustments for drawings salary interest on capital etc are made in the current account whereas in fluctuating capital method all adjustments are made in capital account then next in the fixed capital method as we can see the capital account does not change year on year because all the yearly transactions such as profit interest on capital etc are routed through the current account so the capital account balance remains unchanged unless there is an addition to or withdrawal of capital but in case of fluctuating capital account the balance of the capital account fluctuates from year to year because we account for the profit interest on capital etc in the capital account itself now the fourth and the last difference is the capital account will always show a credit balance now this is because ram is having a capital of 1 lakh rupees he obviously cannot withdraw more than this amount so the balance will always be a credit balance but in case of fluctuating account say the capital contribution is 10000 rupees the firm had incurred a loss in the current year of 20000 rupees so and the fixed capital method capital account will show a credit balance of 10000 rupees and current account will show a debit balance of 20000 rupees but in case of fluctuating method since both these transactions will be routed through the capital account itself so it will show a balance of 10000 rupees debit at the year end therefore fixed capital account capital account will always reflect the credit balance whereas in fluctuating method the capital account may reflect a debit or a credit balance So let us try to understand this concept better with the help of an example. So let us begin with this question. In this question, we have to prepare the capital account and the fixed capital method and fluctuating capital method. In the fixed capital method, we have to prepare the capital account and the current account of each of the partners. So let us start with the question. 
Ram and Rahim started business with a capital of rupees fifty thousand and thirty thousand on first Jan two thousand and nineteen. So on first Jan two thousand nineteen, the capital contribution of Ram will be accounted for by bank account fifty thousand in case of Ram. And first Jan two thousand nineteen by bank account thirty thousand in case of Rahim. Next we have Ram. Sorry, Rahim is entitled to a salary of four hundred rupees per month. Now, since this is the fixed capital account method, we are going to account for this transaction. In Rahim's current account, therefore, thirty first December two thousand nineteen, by PL appropriation account, salaries four hundred into twelve, that is forty eight hundred credit in Rahim's current account. Next, we have interest is allowed on capital and charged on drawings. At the rate of six percent per annum. Now, in this question, since interest on capital and drawing is specifically mentioned as six percent, we are going to provide for them. Had the question been silent, we would not have provided any interest. So, interest on capital for Rahim, the capital was thirty thousand rupees. Into six percent, giving us eighteen hundred rupees for Ram by PL appropriation account. Interest on capital. Capital was fifty thousand rupees into six percent, giving us three thousand rupees. Now it is given that profits are to be distributed equally. During the year, Ram withdrew eight thousand and Rahim withdrew ten thousand. So, in Ram's account, to bank account for drawings is eight thousand. Rahim's account to bank account ten thousand. Now. We will have to charge an interest. On this account, on these balances, so to PL appropriation account in case of Ram, interest on drawings will be the drawings was eight thousand rupees into six percent per annum. Now, since the date of drawing is not mentioned in the question, we'll assume that it was made in the middle of year, and therefore. The interest will be charged for only six months. Therefore, the interest amount will be eight thousand into six percent divided by two, giving us two forty for Ram and for Rahim. It will be ten thousand rupees into six percent into six by twelve, giving us three hundred rupees. The next adjustment is given that profit for the year after all adjustment is rupees twenty thousand nine hundred and fourteen. So, profit for the year. Will be twenty thousand nine forty. Now the profit sharing ratio is given as one is to one, so ten thousand four seventy for Ram and ten thousand four seventy for Rahim. So now that we have given, uh, now that we have you know, treated all the adjustments that have been given in the question, let us balance the count. So Ram's capital account, there has been no withdrawal or addition 
to the capital. So, on 31st December, two balance carried down is 50,000 rupees. Similarly, in case of Rahim, two balance carried down for capital account will be 30,000 because there was no addition or withdrawal of capital. In case of current account, two balance carried down will be 13,470, 13,470, giving us 5,230 balance carried down for Ram. And for Rahim, it will be 4,800 plus 1,800 plus 10,470, giving us 17,070 minus 10,000 minus 300 giving us 6770 for rahim so we have prepared all the accounts under fixed capital method now let us look at the fluctuating capital method In fluctuating capital method, only one account will be prepared, that is Ram's capital account and Rahim's capital account. But all the calculations will remain the same, only all the postings that we had done in the current account will now be done in the capital account itself. So on 1st Jan 2019, Ram had brought in a capital of 50,000 rupees. So by bank account, 50,000. Similarly, for Rahim, he had brought in a capital of 30,000 rupees. Now, Rahim is entitled to a salary of 400 per month. So, PL appropriation account debit to Rahim's capital account. Salary is 4,800 rupees. Next, we have interest is allowed on the capital at 6% per annum. So, in case of Rahim, the capital brought in was 30,000 rupees. So interest will be provided at 30,000 into 6%, that is 1,800. For Ram, by PL appropriation account, interest on capital, 50,000 into 6%, giving us 3,000 rupees. Next we have Ram withdrew 8,000 rupees. So to bank account for drawings is 8,000 for Ram and 10,000 for Rahim. Similarly, to PL appropriation account interest on drawings we'll be taking as uh, for only six months because we have not been given the exact date of drawing therefore the interest on drawings will be 8000 into 6 percent into 6 by 12 240 for ram and Ten thousand into six percent into six by twelve, that is three hundred for Rahim. Now the profit for the year is given 
as 20,940. The profit sharing ratio is 1 to 1. So we'll divide the profit equally between both the partners as 10470 for Ram and 10470 for Rahim. Now we are going to balance these two accounts. So it is 63,470 is the total. This is 55,230 for Ram and for Rahim. It will be plus thirty thousand four seven zero seven zero minus ten thousand minus three hundred so three six seven seven zero. So you'll see. If we add the balance carried down in Ram's capital account and Ram's current account under the fixed capital account method, we'll be getting the total balance carried down under the fluctuating capital method. So with this, we have finished with this sum. In case you have any doubts with respect to the concepts that we had covered in this video, you can post them in the comment section below. If you like the video, do share and subscribe. Thank you.